This is the question asked in today's skill track daily challenge. So let us see our sample test cases. In the first line of input, we are given the space separated string and in the next line we are given the value of n. So now our task is to convert this string into a n column matrix. So here the value of n is 4. So we must create a 4 column matrix and we don't know how many rows would be present. But if every row can have 4 characters, then the number of rows required would be the string length divided by the number of columns. So when we divide the string length of this given input string by 4 and obtain the ceiling value, that would be the number of rows required to form the matrix. So here the string length is 11. So 11 when divided by 4, the integer value would be 2 point something. And when we take the ceiling of it, the value becomes 3. So the number of rows required here is 3. And we are also given 3 conditions to fill the characters into this matrix. So the first condition is we must start filling from bottom and the characters must be filled from right to left. So here the first word is ALL and here we can see in our matrix that we are filling this characters from last and from right to left. So ALL. So we are filling the characters from right to left. And the second condition is if the character is a space then we have to fill the matrix with asterisk. So here after all a space has occurred. So we are printing all from right to left and then space has occurred. So we are filling it with asterisk. And now the next word is is. So we are starting again from right. So I yes. And then again the next is a space. So we are filling with asterisk. And then the next is well. So we are starting from here W and we are continuing from here E L L. Now we have only 11 characters in this string but this matrix can hold up to 12 characters because the number of rows is 3 and the number of columns is 4. So we can have up to 12 characters. So in these cases what we have to do is we have to fill the remaining spaces with hash. So this is our third condition. If we have empty spaces in our matrix we must fill them with hash. So this is how we get our output. Now let us see how to write a C program for this. This is the program I have written. So first I am creating a character array named S which can hold up to 1001 characters. And in the next line I am creating some integers which we will be using. And now we have to accept the space separated string. So to accept the space separated string we are going to make use of this function fgets. So within the parenthesis first we have to mention the name in which we have to store the space separated string and then we have to mention the length of the space separated string. So here we have declared as 1001 characters. So we are passing 1001 here. And in the next we have to pass std in. So this is how we will be using fgets function. And after accepting the space separated string, we are going to accept the value of n in the next line. So I am doing it with a scanf statement. So now after accepting the value of n, if we try to print the string length of the string s, we will be getting an extra value. Suppose let us take our sample input 1, the number of characters were 11. Suppose if we print the string length of s here, we will be getting 12 because we have used fgets. So in order to avoid that we are using a while loop. So within this while loop we will be checking whether every character in the string s is not equal to slash n slash 0 and slash r. And if and if all these conditions are satisfied, then we will be checking for next character. So we will be incrementing the value of i. And the value of i was already initialized to 0. So we will be checking all the characters present in the string s. And if any of these conditions fail, then it means that we have reached our end. So we will be setting the last character as null. So now after doing this process, if we print the string length of s here, we will be getting 11. So whenever we use fgets, we have to use this. So now we have accepted the input space separated string and the value of n. So the value of n is nothing but the number of columns. So now we have to find the number of rows required. So to do that, as we discussed, we are going to divide the string length of s by n. So the number of rows required would be stored in this integer r. And in the next line, we are incrementing the value of r if string length of s mod n is not equal to 0. 
So let us see with the example what we are doing here. So let us consider our sample input 1. The number of characters present there were 11 and the value of n is 4. So 11 when divided by 4 would be 2 point something. But when we store the integer value in the R, the value would be only 2. But we were needed 3 rows. So we are checking in the next line. If string length of S when divided by N leaves the remainder 0, we are going to keep the value as such. And if it doesn't leave the remainder 0, then we need extra rows. So we are incrementing the value of R. So now we know the number of rows required and the number of columns required. So the number of rows required is stored in R and the number of columns is given in input N. So we are creating a character matrix of size R cross N. And now we are going to fill the characters present in the string into this matrix. So we are using a nested for loop. So now we are going to fill the characters present in the input string into this matrix. So to do that we were given three conditions. So the first condition was to fill from last and the characters must be filled from right to left. So here we can see that in the for loop, first we are starting from r-1 and we are going till 0. And in every iteration, we are decrementing the value of i. And column wise also, we are starting from last. So the number of columns is n, so the last would be n-1 and we are going till 0. So this loop is also a decrementing loop. And in every iteration, we are checking for those three conditions. If this string character is a space then we have to fill the matrix with asterisk which we are doing here so we are checking if the string length of s is a space then we are filling the matrix with asterisk or else we are checking k is greater than or equal to string length of s so the k is nothing but which we have initialized here the value of k would be initially 0 and here we are going to get the characters one by one using this k from the string s. So first the s of k would be having the 0th character and in every iteration we will be incrementing the value of k. So the k is just used for the index of this string s. So if the index becomes greater than string length of s it means that we are out of range. So we were given in the question that if we have more spaces in the matrix then we have to fill those empty spaces with hash. So we are doing that here. If the k is greater than or equal to string length, then it is an empty space. So we are filling the matrix with hash. And if both of these conditions are not satisfied, then the character at the kth index is a perfect character. So we are filling our matrix with that character. So when we do like this, in our matrix, we have our expected output. So after updating our matrix, again we are going to use a nested for loop and print our matrix. So we are printing our matrix using this nested loop. Now let us check our program with sample test cases. So now I have given the sample input 1 and our expected output matrix is here. So we are also getting the same output matrix. And now I have given the sample input 2 and here is our expected matrix. So we are also getting the same matrix. So this is the logic behind today's daily challenge. Thank you for watching.